On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to frame for a curbless entry shower. So this video starts out, we had a bunch of dry rot. Uh, we had a beam that had some rot in it. We had um, an exterior wall that had some uh, supporting framing that needed to be removed and replaced. We had a lot of water damage. There were two by fours that were damaged. There was a girder that was damaged. And we had to get all of that stuff out. Enjoy the video. We'll see you at the end. So we got our two by six hangers. These are our, our four by six girders. Um, here's the new four by six that we had to put in right here. We had to put this in. We got a new pier block. Um, so we hang, hang the two by sixes off of here. And I want our new plywood subfloor is going to be at the top is going to be the height right here. We'll hang those. I want to get under here and kind of show you what we've done so far with, with the framing underneath the floor. It's a little tight under here. So you can see here's our here's our two by sixes and we got our hangers and two by six and we got these spaced 16 on center and they span in between the four by six girders. So these four by sixes, they run parallel the whole length of the house, four foot on center. And so for a proper subfloor for tile, we need to hang these two by sixes on it. And you can see we kind of got all of our uh, old plumbing in here. Let me see if I can scoot over there. I kind of want to show. Can I get over there, Ron? I don't think I can. Let me just come out this hole, Ronnie. I'll come out right here. Okay. We changed out all the galvanized piping. We changed it over from galvanized to PEX. We did that on both the hot and the cold sides. And so we got all new piping coming up. Eventually they're gonna probably wanna repipe the rest of their house with, take out the rest of this galvanized. Cause what happens is it gets, uh, you know, especially where it has fittings, um, it, it gets rust in it and, and the diameter of the pipe really closes up so that you get really poor water flow coming through when these, these pipes get old. So at least we have it down below the subfloor. At least we have all of our pecs down below the crawl space so that if it ever needs to be repiped, everything that's done in the wall is done. They don't need to mess with it. We also redid, this was old galvanized. This is the tub on the other side. So we went ahead and took out all the galvanized and put pecs into their, their existing old valve. And this really improved their water pressure. Um, it, it was barely trickling out before and we replaced these two pipes and they got tons of pressure all that they need now um, and then we redid some of these waistlines so um, this was a tub before so it was an inch and a half and what I did was I changed it to a two inch uh, because you're required to have a two inch um, waistline for a shower um, I got my drain centered. This is going to be a linear drain. So I got the stub out. I made my calculations um, how far off the wall I want it, um, side to side where I want it, and I brought my stub out right here. So uh, whenever you're connecting into um, existing cast iron waist lines, I use these rubber fittings. Uh, I call them Fernco fittings. I don't know if that is a brand or what, but. Um, Got the rubber one here. We kept the cast iron vent pipe here. Again, I used an inch and a half. So this is how I switch out to, to ABS when I need to. So this plumbing's all done. Um, what we'll do um, now is, Ronnie, let's go ahead and start stringing these two by sixes, and um, then we'll get the rest of this subfloor in. Okay, cool. So I gotta run. Okay, so what we, what we did here is we got um, our 2x6 joists in, uh, we notched them around the, the mud sill here, uh, we got our rim joist, and this is blocking, so even though we got 16 on center, 2x6 is here, it's always important to put blocking on the edges. So a lot of people will run joists and then leave this open, 
and you don't get your perimeter nailing right on your plywood. The, the perimeter nailing is really important. So I make these, these are just basically nailers and I'm going to make them level with the top of the joist. Now we have support for the perimeter, so I do that around the whole edge, and then we can put our plywood down. So we got our shower floor recessed real nice. Uh, what we have here, Ron, why don't you come in and get an angle from this side? Looking out. So you can see we have our floor dropped. We have a good about inch and five eighths here of drop. I like about two inches when I do a curbless. So what we're going to do is add another half inch here. We'll either do half inch cement board or another layer of half inch plywood. Whatever underlayment we choose to use, we'll figure that out. But we got a good drop here. We'll be using Curdy Drain. Again, I love Schluter's drains. I think they're the best on the market. We also have, this one's going to be really cool because it's chrome. It's their chrome finish in the perforated grate. It's a beautiful, beautiful drain. So this, this is my favorite style drain. I can't wait for you guys to see it when it's all done. But that's what we're going to be putting in. We got our two inch stub out. Again, I have um, all of these locations are really critical. I have my stub out centered between the wall and where the, the curbless is going to start. We're going to have a single slope that comes down here to the line drain. We'll have a little slope coming this way, a little bit of space in between the drain and the wall. I actually like to have a little bit of space there. We're getting our glass mat gypsum up, so we've started that. We'll finish that up the rest of the day, and then we're going to be able to, to do our sheetrock. So. Make sure to watch the next video coming up. I'm really glad you watched my videos. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I love reading your comments. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Again, watch the next video coming up. If you haven't seen part one and two, make sure you check those out. This is going to be an ongoing video series. I'm probably going to have three or four more parts to this bathroom remodel that I call Grandpa Bath. But anyways, I love you guys. I love being your tile coach. I hope you enjoy these videos, and we'll see you on the next one.